Bruce Ford is an odd jobs man from Umina whose work with the elderly and the disabled made him realise the need for a wheelie bin opener. With help from a business partner, he got to work on the idea and eight months later has patented the Aussie opener. It's easy to attach and is operated simply by pushing the treadle, a la the old pedal bin in the kitchen, allowing hands-free hygienic use. In fact, it's so good, even the local council likes the idea. We have full approval from our local council up here and also BFI, our local waste contractor. They guarantee they will service any bin that has this item on it. Bruce's development isn't the first of its type. This one is already in use at the Norco Dairy Foods factory on the far north coast, in various hospitals and even on the streets of Lismore. But his is by far the simplest. Just a pedal and a linkage clipped onto the wheel without interfering with the bin's mobility. At around $25 at your local hardware shop, it's also reasonably priced and Bruce has hopes of widening his marketing horizons. Internationally, we don't know as yet. We certainly hope to open up some markets over there, but we're open to offers. Fumes from the tons of smouldering garbage forced firefighters to wear breathing gear as they poured on millions of litres of water. Flames leapt from the debris, forming a fire front which stretched nearly 50 metres. Firefighters worked for more than two hours before a bulldozer was called in to turn the rubbish over, allowing water to seep through the litter. Today the heat shifted from the piles of rubbish to the Newcastle City Council, forcing it to douse fears that pollution affected nearby residents. The actual location of the, the fire was at least 1.5 kilometres away from the nearest household and we were lucky with respect to the wind direction so there wasn't a, a major smoke problem. The Waste Management Service believes a flammable object found in a wheelie bin may have ignited setting off the fire. It intends to tighten its fire management plan with closer screening of incoming rubbish. Vanessa Spark, NBN News. Some of the youth squad came under the watchful eye of seniors coach John Cosmina today. He would have already been impressed with their performances so far this season, eight games for five wins and just one loss. Regular coach Greg Smith has taken the team to the top of the table. The squad of 17 players drawn from clubs in the Hunter, North Coast and North West. Yeah, we're playing quite well this year, we're putting it in and showing on the table and that. It's also helped ease a few of John Cosmina's worries about the future of the Breakers senior team. The success of the youth squad will hopefully ensure a production line of professionals who have all played in a national competition. I think one of our biggest problems is that we're now at senior level competing against players that are the same age as us, but they've had five or six years involvement with National League um, clubs in terms of training and, and even games at senior level on the park. Oh yeah, that's what you know, most of the youth team players are here for, try and make it up into the first grade, so we're working hard. <laughs> the youth team plays the New South Wales Institute of Sport tomorrow night. Kick off at Breakers Stadium at a quarter past five, the seniors game to follow at 7.30. Richard O'Leary, NBN News.
It wasn't always this efficient. But a dedicated team at the Royal Newcastle Hospital has spent the past five years revolutionising the management and disposal of its waste. And now official recognition for initiative and commitment, winners of the Health Department's Healthy Hospitals Award. For the Environmental Services Manager, bringing about change was simple. I guess a very proactive approach that uh, rather than wait for um, regulation or government to dictate what approaches we should take, we're out there setting trends. The strategies in place at the hospital focus on recovering recyclable materials, introducing reusable items where possible and streamlining the management of waste. It's a coordinated approach that depends on staff support and the environment isn't the only winner. There are considerable cost savings for the hospital and uh, the money saved can be redirected to patient care. The hospital's waste management policies are not only attracting attention here in Australia, but details of the program are being sent to hospitals in Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. Sarah Griffiths, NBN News. It seems developers can't get hold of potential sites fast enough, keen to cash in on what is rapidly becoming a growth industry. This site at North Entrance is the latest under consideration. The Sydney-based Walker Group planning to develop around 60 hectares, which Wyong Council says will be a boon for the region. It's going to be an international style golf course resort. It's going to employ up to 200 people uh, and it will improve the environment as well. With plans for 400 villas and a three-storey hotel on this coastal strip, the development will be big. And although the area has been sand mined for years and is desolate in some parts, Wyong Council admits the community may be concerned about its effect on the environment. I believe we'll get a reaction and that, that's fine. The community have, have their rights to react, but I believe this be, proposal will be put together properly so everybody have their input and every environmental problem will be discussed and sorted out. Sarah Griffiths, NBN News. Aside from the water, this shaft, 23 metres below the hustle and bustle of Newcastle, has changed little from the day the last miner packed up his tools. It's not unusual for builders in the city to come across old mine shafts, but it was the clear water that allowed these extraordinary pictures to be taken. It's one of our highlights of uh, my career, and uh, I look back on this as uh, being a, a very exciting time. The pictures afford a rare glimpse of life underground in the 1830s. The shaft, just a metre in height, is supported by wooden braces. The walls bear the scars of cramped, back-breaking work with pick and shovel. The drilling which uncovered the shaft was necessary to ensure the foundations of a six-storey Telstra building. The demands of the modern world will now intrude on the time capsule. What we're doing on this side is to form uh, columns of grout uh, at four and a half metre intervals all the way down the workings and these will be in a pyramid type shape and these will support the roof of the mine. It won't be a total loss though, a copy of the film will be supplied to the mine subsidence board for research and as a historical record. Phil Hind, NBN News. It's taken much hard work and two years of fundraising by local community groups, but it's been well worth the effort. Today the palliative care unit in Nelson Bay was opened, a project prompted by the death of a local resident diagnosed with terminal cancer. The extension to the polyclinic includes two single bedrooms with en-suites and a spacious living area. The wards and lounge open onto an outdoor area with views of the surrounding bushland. The polyclinic's Mark Longworth says the centre will make a big difference in the care of cancer patients. Oh, certainly for the terminally ill, for their family, for their carers, the fact that they no longer have to travel every time they need care down to the Mercy Hospice. 
Close relatives of the patients will be encouraged to stay with their loved ones in the unit. Launched by the Federal Minister for Schools, Education and Training, Dr David Kemp in Newcastle, it's hoped the $700,000 employment scheme will help curb the hunters' soaring unemployment levels. You've had a, a high level of unemployment amongst young people for quite a long time here in the Hunter. Uh, we're very concerned about the situation. Uh, we think this region has been neglected for too long. $290,000 will be provided to three organisations to place 470 school leavers from 74 schools in traineeships or jobs. To provide uh, programs which include employment or work experience with a school-based program. Um, that will provide many young people with links with a local employer. More than $100,000 will go towards new coal traineeships with Port Waratah Coal Services, providing the unemployed with some valuable new skills. In the long run I could end up with a full-time job at Port Waratah out of it, or um, if I can't then I'll have skills where I'll be able to go and get a job elsewhere. It'll be a good start for the future. All the training will be given, hopefully we can make a good future out of it. A registered cooperative of mechanical and engineering firms has also been set up for the employment of 106 new apprentices. And there are plans for a one-stop apprentice shop, providing streamlined information for both employers and job seekers. Emma C. Ossian, NBN News. The Kuragang Wetland Rehabilitation Project aims to restore the land to its natural state so it can be enjoyed and preserved. Today's grant of $65,000 will help to reach that goal, but more important is the new lease agreement. The 500 hectares of land owned by the Department of Public Works will be leased to the Hunter Management Catch Trust so it can be rehabilitated. A dollar a year. For, uh, for the Catchment Management Trust to restore this wetland. It will do a lot for fish habitat, does a lot for international uh, travelling birds, it does a lot for the whole matrix in the Hunter Valley. It's hoped to eventually restore the tidal flow to the area, replenishing fish and prawn stocks. A campaign of community awareness is also underway. We're replanting the rainforest, we're providing boardwalks so the public can get in there and see the the rainforest the way it should have been in the old days and uh, we have an educational centre here now so that we can bring school children out.
Newcastle's Civic Theatre was turned into a science laboratory today to help open the minds of the masses. But there'll be no equations, diagrams or facts and figures to remember in this one-man science show. Dr Mike Gore is the director of the National Science and Technology Centre, but he's also an entertainer and storyteller. It's a story. I tell a story about a very special man, the man who was the first experimental scientist that we know about. If Galileo is the inspiration, Dr Gore provides the perspiration, running about the stage, proving this, quashing that, and most importantly, keeping the audience happy. But it's far from being superficial showmanship. It teaches the very substance of science without the drain on the brain. Oh, this has a lot of relevance to modern society because uh, this talks about the way science uh, comes about. Uh, it talks about how science fits into the everyday, and that's very important. The show is at the Civic Theatre over the next two nights, but it could soon be coming to a classroom near you. There is a change blowing through the classrooms, and that is away from simple chalk and talk to ones where, in fact, uh, teachers do a lot more interactive stuff for the, for the children. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. He's by Bengal Flyer from Fine Flight and he goes like a rocket. Blazing Flight was in Coffs Harbour this morning, halfway through the trip from his Broadmeadow stable to Durban in Brisbane for Saturday's AWA Stakes. The five-year-old gelding is racing in brilliant form. From 16 starts, he's won nine and finished second on three other occasions. So far, he's amassed more than $80,000 in prize money and trainer Mel Eggleston expects connections may be in for a $50,000 windfall on Saturday. Yeah, I give him a good chance on Saturday. He's, he's uh, going up in class, John, but he's um, probably not his suitable distance at this stage, but um, I give him a chance, yeah. Blazing Flight has won four of its last six starts, including three on the trot. Its last outing was in the welter at Randwick on the 5th of November, over 1,400 metres. It has since been freshened for the trip north. It'll be five weeks in between runs, but he did trial pretty well over here a couple of weeks ago, over 800 metres, so um, he's sharp enough. The AWA Stakes is the first leg of the Mercedes-Benz Triple Crown. There's a $100,000 car on offer if any horse can win Saturday's race, plus the Durban Stakes and Burnborough Handicap. The other guy, uh, I told him if, if we win it, uh, he, uh, it wouldn't, he lives in New Guinea, so I don't think Mercedes would go too good up there, I told him. The roads would be a bit rough, he said, yeah, fair enough. Jonathan Upton, NBN News.
centre traded his sleigh for a more high-tech mode of transport to pay a visit to patients at the Stockton Hospital today. Hundreds turned out to give Chris Kringle an enthusiastic welcome. It was an opportunity for Santa and his band of elves to make some early deliveries and spread a little Christmas cheer with a shower of lollies. Father Christmas chose a different mode of transport for his visit to kids who'll spend Christmas at Ronald McDonald House. While it was a chance for the kids to catch up with Santa, it gave Santa a chance to catch up with an old mate. As he does every year, Santa came prepared with a sack full of prezzies and a heart full of song. He also had some parting advice with just a fortnight to go till Christmas. Santa's reception at the Walls End Uniting Church was less than welcoming, where he found himself tied to a tree. The nativity play for local school children is an attempt to put the Christ back into Christmas. No one seemed to mind the absence of Santa. The kids' minds are way in the manger, focused on the three wise men and a living, breathing baby Jesus. Phil Hind, NBN News. The equipment is capable of showing exactly what makes up a liquid substance like blood and urine. We could detect uh, whether or not an athlete uses steroids or we could detect whether or not a horse, for example, is being doped. A small sample the size of a grain of sand is inserted into the machine where it's mixed with solvents. Five days later, a computer readout reveals the compounds which make up the substance. While police and medical workers plan to make use of the equipment, others will also benefit. It will help industry, for example, if, if they want to detect uh, contaminants in their wastewaters or in a whole range of different industrial applications. The university will officially begin testing next month. Vanessa Spark, NBN News. According to government statistics, Aboriginal Australians suffer more health problems than any other population group in the country. The Hunter Centre for Health Advancement is actively trying to reverse that trend. Their latest initiative, a computer program that encourages Aborigines to look after their own health. This interactive computer is sort of a big step since it's the first one that specifically targets a certain group. While the basic program has been used by Hunter Health for the past three years, this is a version recently modified by Mr Ship to meet the specific needs of the Koori community. At Newcastle today, a chance for health officers and local Aborigines to sample the new system, which prompts the user to follow a series of smoking or alcohol-related issues. Another initiative unveiled, a pocket card containing some handy hints to help young Kooris control their drinking. The idea came from kids when we did uh, focus groups in the high schools around the Hunter. They, they came up with the idea of having a card because most kids like having cards in their wallet, so I think they'll work really well. Sarah Griffiths, NBN News.
It was a case of new eyes looking at old problems. Five Year 11 students from Macquarie College studied how Lake Macquarie City Council deals with insurance claims and they've come up with some suggestions to streamline the process. The main problem was that the, the actual claimants, when they issue a claim, aren't aware of what kind of information they should include. So, um, and that led to problems right the way through the process. The Enterprise team was one of 11 working with businesses in the Hunter, a project organised by the Australian Quality Council. Each company identifies a problem and the students are given a week to fix it, with some positive results. And that actually streamlined it and made some improvements, which, was quite, which we've taken on board already. The Council plans to invite students back again next year. It's not hard to tell there's no time to get your eye in in the Walls End 15 over series. It concluded this afternoon with batters going to bash while bowlers tried to follow suit. All 12 Newcastle District clubs plus four from the City and Suburban League are involved. Today's finals provided plenty of hard running between the wickets as well as dozens of fours and sixes. With each player bowling one over, it's a batsman's paradise and a lot of the day was spent retrieving the balls from the nearby creek. There were a number of classic duels in the lead up to the decider, none better than the Walls End Stag and Hunter quarter final. A quick fire 52 from Greg Gies kept Walls End scoring at more than 10 runs and over. They finished at 7 for 152 and held on to win by just three runs. It was a Walls End Belmont grand final and Walls End won by three runs. They weren't the easiest conditions at Nobby's this morning. The Nelson Bay crew were one of the first to find that out. Troubles for them, but not so for Nobby's. The local knowledge was proving invaluable as the club raced away with three of today's events, the veterans, reserves and the ladies. But spoils were shared in the other races. Caves Beach youngsters took out the under-18s. Newcastle was first ashore in the under-21s, while Swansea Belmont took the points in the open men's. They beat home of Oka. Caves Beach finished third. The Wyong and Gosford councils say they were promised an input into the water and sewerage review, the third such review in eight years. However, so far, neither council has been invited to the review committee's meetings and the final one is on Wednesday. A report is due in January. We hear that the report's already been written. The Mayor is worried the review will recommend the water and sewerage system be handed over to a semi-government authority. He believes because the system is so modern, it will then be a target for privatisation. What you're talking about is a transfer of half a billion dollars from this region to Sydney. And most of that money was put in by the local people here, by the ratepayers here. So why should the people of the Central Coast subsidise the state government uh, for its financial incompetence? Wednesday's final review committee meeting had been scheduled for Gosford but was transferred to Sydney after a protest rally was organised. Despite the move, the protest will go ahead. It'll be the people power that win this and where they decide to have their steering committee doesn't really matter. We're having our rally, it'll be people power that win this one. Phil Hind, NBN News.
For thieves out to rob premises, chances are this is what they'll meet. A highly trained guard dog letting them know who's boss. The dogs are being used in increasing numbers to tackle rising break and enter rates. The canines, which undergo intensive training, will not attack while a person remains still. An attack only occurs once the offender tries to get away. General Basics Training offers a six week course for the handler and the dog and it just goes on from there. But you must get trained regularly every week. The guard dog industry has been tainted in the past by unscrupulous business owners placing untrained and dangerous dogs in their premises. Unfortunately there's still those parties uh, on board that want to go to the pound and pick dogs up or get dogs freebies out of the paper and put a lead on and think they're a canine handler. It doesn't work that way. The canine handlers must be taught properly and the dogs must be taught properly on and off lead. Meanwhile, pedal power is also being used to upgrade security in Hamilton. The Hamilton Chamber of Commerce has donated a push bike to be ridden by a security guard around the suburb's back streets. If the initiative proves successful, the Chamber will consider placing another security guard on the bike beat.